Smartsheet is a combination of a spreadsheet with very robust project management features. And as you're going to see in this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can lay things out in terms of your columns and your rows. Where your rows, of course, are the different items that need to be completed, and the columns describe different things about each item that needs to get completed during the course of a project. I'm going to show you how there's different types of columns that can be employed for this purpose. Of course, there's the main milestone or task at hand, and you're going to see things like a checkbox that you can add in a column to indicate when something's been completed, certainly date-based things like a starting and ending date, and perhaps a due date, so that you can distinguish what the due date was from what the actual completion date was. You're also going to see how you can add a column and use things like symbols that describe the status of the project, whether there's a red flag or what percent complete it is. Things along those lines that make it easy from a very visual perspective to understand exactly where a project is at and what's going on with that project. So come along with me in this lesson. I'm going to show you everything there is to see. And I'm confident that by the time we're done, even with just this first lesson, you're already going to have ideas about how you can use this beyond what I'm showing you in your own practice and even for your own clients. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. What is Smartsheet? Is it a smart spreadsheet or is it project management software? Can it make my life easier? Will it help me increase efficiency and productivity? Will it help me make sure things aren't missed and that they get done on time? Will it help me keep track of who's doing what and when? Can I use it to do my grocery shopping? The answer is yes. Yes to all of the above. You can do all of these things with Smartsheet. And in fact, I bring up the grocery shopping list to be a little bit funny, but also to point out and highlight the fact that it's up to you to be creative with something like this once you learn how to use it. So I'm not going to uh, even attempt to tell you all the possible scenarios under which you can use Smartsheet. I'd rather, in fact, leave that to you to come up with some ideas and then let me know, as you'll see at the bottom of the write-up on this lesson, I invite you to let me know what use cases you've come up for in terms of uh, how you might use Smartsheet uh, separate and apart from what I lay out for you in this course. So I think the first thing that's handy to do is give you the lay of the land. And what you're looking at on screen here is what it looks like when you just create a brand new blank project in Smartsheet. And what you'll have, of course, is these columns, the first of which is called the primary column. And this is just that. It's the primary task or object that you're trying to describe information about, right? So the task is often what you might call something like this. And you'll notice when I go in here and I just double click it to go in, that it even has this uh, information here about why I can't change the column type. And the reason is because there has to be one primary column that can't be changed and it has to be a text or number type of column. Now let's go through all the other column types to see what you can do because I think just getting this look at the different choices you have here in Smartsheet will start to uh, give rise to you getting creative and thinking in terms of how you can use this all the different ways. One of the things that really stands out to me about Smartsheet is how easy in fact it is to create these different types of columns. A lot of times, especially when it's the first time we're being exposed to a new application, it can be overwhelming in terms of feeling like it's going to be so hard to use this thing. The reality is you're going to see, if you haven't already seen, how easy it is to simply double click on a column and choose which type you want. And the minute you choose which type, for example, let's look at the drop downs for a second, it's so easy then to populate what the choices are going to be for a drop down list and how to create that. You're going to see later in the course how I show you examples of this specifically, where you can take something like a customer list from your QuickBooks file and drop it in to use that in a drop down in Smartsheet so that you can incorporate what's going on in your accounting software very directly with what's happening in Smartsheet. It's so easy to do. I can't wait for you to see that for yourself. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So I'm going to click OK and then we're going to double click the second column. And let's say we're going to use this contact list column type. And a contact list is just that. When I add in collaborators, uh, we might want to assign tasks to them. So I'm going to create the assigned to column as a contact list. And you'll see that I've got people in here I can assign tasks to. I can assign one to myself, to Chris, to Eric, or Perry. And the reason these people are here is because I have them uh, in this shared collaborative workspace, which we'll get into later in the course in terms of what a workspace is. But just know for now that that's, that's how these names got here. And of course, right down here, I can choose to add someone new. So if you've got nobody, all you have to do is click on this option and provide Smartsheet with their email address, and they'll get an invite sent to them, and let, and, and, which lets them know that they've been assigned a task in your Smartsheet project. Now let's look at column three. 
we can establish a date. So maybe this is the start date for the project or for the task. And then of course that gives rise to what the next column should be, probably kind of obvious. Let's call this the due date. And these uh, formatted as dates are specific and it gives you this cool little calendar drop down. And I love that they have this, that you can just default it to today. If you put a T in there, it also will come up with today's date. In fact, if you put any character in there, it'll just come up with today's date. So maybe this is going to be due in a week from now. Let's look at what else we can do. The next column type after date would be a drop down list. So this is going to be for choices. Choice 1, choice 2. And this can be people's names. If you're you know, using QuickBooks and using this project management tool, Smartsheet, in, the form, you know, in conjunction with something you're doing in QuickBooks, then this could be your customer a job that you assign. And you can drop your customer list uh, out of QuickBooks into Excel and then copy and paste it right into this screen here. I've actually tested it out and it works beautifully. So you can drop that list into Excel, copy and paste it in here. You might want to go through that list first and eliminate anybody that's uh, sort of inactive. But that's how easy it is to create a drop down. Let's look at the next column type. After drop down list we have checkbox and this might be useful to do something like task completed. And if I could spell, that's helpful. So this way, the person, Eric, can come in here, and when he's finished the task, he can check it off that it's been completed. Let's add in another column. Insert. I'm right-clicking, and I'm choosing Insert Column Right. So I want to insert a new column on my right. And after the checkbox, let's do some symbols. So this can be Status. And here you have to select which type of visual symbol. Notice there are several. So I can say that this is going to be a status light, OK. And then I can choose red, yellow, or green. The project, the task is going poorly. It's going well, whatever I might want to use this for. Let's insert another one. And we'll do a priority. And in this case, I might actually call it priority. And then over here, I can indicate if it's a high or low priority. Let's add in another column to the right. After symbols, we have auto numbering system. Now, this is something I actually use quite a bit, especially when I'm collaborating with others on a sheet. And I don't necessarily care that much about when it was created or who it was created by, but I am often very interested in when it's been modified and who by. So I like to add in these two columns here. So we're going to do the modified date first. Click OK. Another column to the right. And we're going to go to Auto Number System and Modified By. Notice it's grayed out once you've added a column because obviously there'd be no point in adding the same one twice. It would be the exact same information. Notice also that initially there's nothing in here. Once I save the sheet to update it, it will put the information in. And there it is. And it shows you that it was modified on February 2nd, 2015 at 10.32 a.m. And it shows you, of course, that it was modified by me. So these are all the column types that you can use. Now what else is in here that makes this substantially different from a spreadsheet? Well, I can set a reminder on a specific line item, and we'll get more into that later. I can start a discussion, or I can attach something. And what's also cool is I can, in the context of the discussion, attach something. So right there, these are some features that already now you can start to see where Smartsheet departs from a typical spreadsheet in terms of how it's used and what it can be used for. You can't do that. You can, you can insert comments in a spreadsheet, but it's not the same thing, and it's not as nearly as, as well organized as this, in my opinion, as far as uh, using it for something like that. So we also didn't name this uh, a, a task, so some task, I'll just call it. And I want to bring that up, and then I'll control S to save, because then when I add in the discussion, it picks up whatever information's in that primary column as the title of the discussion. Because in theory, that's what we're wanting to have a discussion about, is whatever this task is. 
So this is just to give you an idea of the lay of the land in terms of what's available to you here in Smartsheet. And I think this is a good place to stop and ask you to pause, or as the video completes in another few moments, what I'd like to have you do is go take a Smartsheet free trial, or I believe we're offering a deep discount to students at schoolofbookkeeping.com. So if you haven't already signed up for School of Bookkeeping, and get a paid account with Smartsheet, and start playing around. And do what I've done at least here, create a blank project, and start laying out at least one of each column type so that you can start to get a feel for all the different things you can do and how everything works. And then as we get further into the course, we're going to look at the mobile app next, and then everything else thereafter is going to be looking at specific use cases that are applicable for accountants and bookkeepers primarily, and small business owners as well. As always, I hope you get something out of this and every other lesson that I show you. Please post your comments and questions in our answers forum if you're a student. Use our public forums if you're not. I look forward to getting your questions. I look forward to answering them, and I look forward to seeing you on the web. Now you've seen how easy and seamless it is to get your column set up so that you can describe everything that you want to be able to describe about a project. And everything I've shown you so far has been based on the browser application. So in the next lesson, we're going to take a look at what this looks like in the mobile app. And once you have the two, then you'll see how you can manage your project from either your desktop or your mobile with ease.